it's great that we have all this pot to smoke. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad. We gotta do it before my mom gets home. Yeah. I don't want her to find out. Yeah, she would come home, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to smoke all this pot and then tell kids at school that we did this. <laughs> How many should we take? I don't know, four? No, I heard some kid died off four. Well, then we better take three. Take three what? Pot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so much fun doing pot. Oh no! I heard a sound that sounded like my mom coming home. She would come home, that bitch. Yeah. Oh, oh, quick! We gotta quick, hide. Quick! Quick! Put me in this bag. <laughs> quick! No, we gotta hide the help. pot. No, I, I can bring the pot in with me. Just help me get in the bag. Hey, T, I'm home from the church store. She's home. She's yeah, home. she's home. No, Quick, no, help me. No, we need to hide the pot. You don't no. have to get in the bag. Yes, it, help me. I can bring the pot with me. I'm coming up the stairway. She's coming up the stairway. Help me get... Help my foot. My foot. It's not bad that you're at my house. It's bad that we have pot. <laughs> I'm coming down the hallway now. She's coming... Just come throw it under the bag. Uh, you can put me under the bag once I'm in the bag. Just help me in the bag. God damn it. I, I'm almost to your door. Look, I've got air holes. You planned this? I knew it would happen one day. I'm jiggling the knob. Help my foot. I'm opening your door. I will. I'm entering your room. <laughs> Hi, Mom. How is the church store? Good. Hey, I smell smoke in here, T. I don't smell any smoke. It must be your menopause. Uh, it could be. Hey, what's with that bag? <laughs> oh, it's just, you know, a bag. Well, it looks pretty big. <laughs> I think there's someone in that bag. T, what's in that bag? Nothing, just some books I think I found in the street. Oh. Gosh, it looks six feet tall. Six two! T! I think someone's in there. What's in that bag? No way! <laughs> Sorry, buddy! Had to make some space! T! Is that marijuana? I can't believe you're smoking marijuana. You are in so much trouble, young man. When your father gets home, we'll talk about this. But for now, you're grounded. And Mom, you Dad's having an affair with his secretary at work. What? <laughs> you think you know a guy. I'm so angry. After 20 years and all this. Yeah. Man. Kind of makes this whole pot thing seem pretty insignificant. Yeah. I'm going to go play outside without my pants on. Okay. <laughs> I'm so angry. Hi, honey. I'm home from work. Oh, so mad. You cheated on me. T told me all about it. What's wrong? You were having an affair with your secretary. What are you talking about? I know all about it. It's, I cook and clean for 20 years, and this is the thanks I get. What about me? I put in 60 hours a week so we can have this roof. <laughs> yeah, well... Don't try and defend yourself. I'm not trying to defend myself. Hey, what's this bag? Nothing. <laughs> Sit down here. It's not a big deal. Don't change the subject. I'm not changing the subject. We'll talk about this. Why is this bag here? It's just a bag. It doesn't matter. Listen to me. Look, I'm getting a divorce, and I'm not going to be in contact with my kids or call them on their birthdays. No! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this sketch really happened in a little town called Branson seven years ago. This is a chapter from my life. And uh, why would I do something like this that's so painful up on stage? Well, that's because I think that comedy is just tragedy remembered. So uh, that's how a lot of us comedians come up with these hilarious jokes, like my mom never remarried and now battles anorexia. <laughs> so what we've done is we've put together a kind of behind-the-scenes look at the making of the Sam in the Bag sketch, from its huge journey from real life to on stage. 60, 60 hours, 60 hours a week. What about me? What about me? What about me? 60 hours a week. When did you first hear about the story? 
Um, that's a famous story. We all know about the Sam in the Bag story, and uh, it's a good one. I got paranoid a lot, and I had all these plans that if anything ever went down, I wasn't going to be there. My idea for not being there was being in a bag. I was skeptical at first, because um, I thought it would be easier just to put the pot in your pocket or anywhere, really. Um, but Sam thought that it would be better to be to hide himself in a bag with the pot. It was the original plan, but then as time went on, um, hiding the pot in the bag was nixed. Yeah, that was uh, thrown out of the bag onto the floor, which um, I thought defeated the purpose. That's when things went bad, because he... He snitched on his dad. I knew that my dad had been having an affair. So I brought that up, kind of like the first thing that I thought of. Dad's having an affair. And my mom, um, it worked. My mom was mad. Then um, I, I left, and it was just Sam in the bag with my mom. And then my dad came home. Then they started fighting. And, I, you know, it's like when people fight, what does a bag do? Who knows that? I didn't. Basically, my mother threw a fit. Uh, things were broken. Um, she stormed out, got in the car, took off, said, we'll never see her again. She's never coming back here. We could all go to, you know. And um, we didn't think we'd ever see her again. Really, I didn't. Uh, until, uh, but we were wrong, because that night, uh, she came back, and uh, she beat my father to death uh, while he was sleeping. Uh, just crack, you know. I had to get out because the cops came. I was surprised to see his father was dead. Then she had to go to prison. And that was just, it, it began a whole, whole horrible idea, um, just awful experience. But now we're doing a sketch about it. That's good. Doing this is a really good way for me to um, deal with it. We don't usually do skits that are, are non-fiction. We usually do fictional skits. And so this wasn't just, let's be wacky. It was, hey, let's try and do justice to something that really happened. I always feel the healing has to start somewhere for my friends. Trevor, during rehearsals, was um, intense. And uh, he, you know, he cares a lot about the characters and the performance. And so uh, he gets into it. I'm going down the hallway. No! You know, it's good for me as an actor to, to work with someone who knows what they want. He knows what he wants. And so, um, you know, that was, uh, that was something else. He's very vocal. Why are you doing this? I'm coming is... down the hallway! Well, are, are, you, is this a, are you... What are you doing? I'm just reading my line. Are you? Yes, I'm coming, coming down the hallway. You're coming down the hallway. What did I what say? What were you saying? What, what did I say? I said I'm coming down the coming hallway. Coming up the hallway. Is that what I said? Don't read it like a faggot. It was kind of hard because, uh, you know, having him direct because I was there. I, I didn't necessarily see it all happen, but when he's like, like, that's not how, no, you don't breathe out of the hole like this. Like, you breathe out like this. <gasps> you know, it's like, dude, I was in the back. So that's really, um, that's really how I deal with things. Is, um, I just, I'm not ready to think about that right now. And I think that's good. I mean, just to have that kind of, um, command over your thoughts. That you can say, I'm not going to think about this right now. I'll think about this later. And I'll just, uh, you know, kind of pent it up. And, you know, address it sometime, you know, down the road. Um, but doing this has really helped me to revisit that a little bit and just kind of maybe skim off the top of those thoughts and, and, and see that, you know, that I, I harbor resentment, I think, for people who have not gone through something like this. I know your dad died and all. Get over it. Uh, I'm kind of jealous of people that have had happy 
lives. Do you have anything that you can think of that you would reenact, want to reenact with the troop at one time? My first, no. No. No, I got nothing. Resentful. I want, I want to kill um, everybody's parents. Yeah, so we don't really hang out that much anymore. I, I, I want to I kill a lot of people. And um, I think about it a lot, and I draw it a lot. And um, I, I could see someday in the future um, doing it. And um, I'm, get, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. There's, and that is something that I think this has taught me. And that's good. I've um, come to grips with myself and sort of accepted that I'm going to kill a lot of, a lot of people.